in the last class we have seen the properties of fourier transform i mean in this class we will continue the fourier transform topic okay, so function okay, that is when we apply the fourier transform for a signal x of t okay we get x of s again this x of s uh, consists of s okay again the s may be in numerator or denominator or the s may be present both on numerator and denominator so that's why the x of s may be a format like this okay it's like numerator by denominator then again in the numerator okay see if you put numerator is equal to 0 and please remember the numerator is function of s okay so it could be something like say for example s plus 1 okay then this when you put numerator is equal to s is equal to 0 then you will be getting value for z okay value for z again depending on how many uh, terms are there here okay here only one term is there so only you'll get you will be getting only one answer so this s value we are calling it as a zeros this s value we are calling it as a zeros okay so whenever transfer function is there okay if you make numerator is zero then you'll be getting value for s that values we are calling as a zeros of the transfer function because when you substitute that value here for this function then that will become zero that's why those values are are called zeros of the transfer function then if you make a denominator to be equal to zero then again you will be getting some value for z that value we are calling it as a poles okay why because it is called as a it is called as poles when you substitute s yes, values of this value okay in the transfer function then the transfer function becomes like infinite okay uh, see uh, if if pole value is substituted substituted in in x of s it becomes infinite the transfer function becomes infinite okay, so if pole value is substituted in the transfer function then the transfer function value becomes like infinite okay so again regarding zeros and poles okay we might be studying in detail in control system okay so then again for a x of s we have both numerator and denominator again we can calculate degree okay degree for numerator also and also degree for denominator okay degree means the highest order okay how many s yes, is there yes highest power of s yes. okay we will call it as a degree okay, then what is the degree of the numerator and then what is the degree of the denominator degree of the denominator okay see uh, in some cases okay some cases are uh, degree of the numerator okay may be greater than the degree of the denominator degree of the denominator then that function is called improper function then that function is called improper function okay then suppose the degree of the numerator may be equal to the degree of the denominator that function is called proper func that function is called proper function okay in some cases uh, degree of the numerator degree of the numerator will be less than the degree of the denominator then that function is called strictly proper function okay strictly proper function okay so mostly for a practical system mostly we'll be getting this third condition okay mostly we'll be getting this third condition when you write a transfer function for a practical system okay general in general it will be uh, like a strictly proper function strictly proper function okay so that means what is the example for strictly proper okay example Say for example, x of s is equal to s plus 1 divided by s plus 2 into s plus 3. Okay, then we can also write this divided, uh, s plus 1 divided by s square plus 5s plus 6. Okay, once if the transfer function is like this, again the order of the numerator is less than the order of the denominator, then this function is strictly proper. This function is strictly proper okay this function is strictly proper again uh, the example for proper function is say for example suppose s plus 1 by s plus 2 again the order of the 
numerator and denominator is same so this we will call it as a proper function this we will call it as a proper function or otherwise if x of s is given like this s square 5s plus 6 divided by s plus 1 then this will call it as a improper function this will call it as a improper function okay so uh, that means uh, once for uh, again mostly we will be taking the strictly proper function strictly proper function okay and again even we will not take proper function also so mostly we will be concentrating on the strictly proper function this kind of functions okay again uh, the strictly proper means the order of the numerator is uh, uh, generally less than the order of the denominator again why we are not considering this proper function and improper improper function and all we'll see in future why we are we will not be considering those function in general okay what is the problem with that uh, functions okay so then uh, we'll see initial value theorem and final value theorem initial initial value theorem okay see in laplace transform we are converting the signal from time domain into the s domain okay x of t laplace transform is x of s then what is the initial value of the signal initial value means this is always with respect to time okay value always with respect to time then what is the value initial value of the signal that means what is x of 0 okay what is the value of the signal at t is equal to 0 okay t is equal to 0 okay so either we can calculate like this or uh, the same number we can calculate with help of with help of x of s also okay same thing we can also calculate with help of x of s okay see once we know x of t directly you can put t is equal to 0 then you can calculate the initial value but sometime if you are not having x of t but you are having only x of s then also with help of some formula we can calculate what is the initial value okay so the relation is called initial value theorem okay so the initial value theorem means x of 0 is equal to limit okay limit t tends to 0 x of t is equal to limit s tends to infinite s into x of s okay see already will be having x of s you multiply with s again then you substitute s tends to infinite okay wherever s is there you substitute infin infinite and also make sure that your value is finite okay see whenever you are operating with this final answer answer has to be finite okay even though you are substituting infinite answer has to be finite answer has to be finite answer should not go to infinite okay sometime if it is going to infinite again we have to apply some kind of modification to get finite as far as possible and again in the beginning itself we can identify whether we will get the finite answer or infinite answer okay see this initial value theorem is applicable only for strictly proper function okay applicable only for strictly proper this is very very important it is applicable applicable only for only for strictly proper function okay strictly proper function okay that means what before applying initial value theorem itself you have to identify what is the nature of x of s okay again it has to satisfy these properties okay strictly proper function properties okay if it is not satisfying again you cannot apply this formula so again we can simply write initial value theorem cannot be applied or there is no initial value like that you can write directly okay so before applying initial theorem you have to verify this whether the given function is strictly proper or not okay so now we'll see some example find and again uh, yes before going to that we'll see what is find uh, what is final value theorem then later we'll take the example final value theorem again this is also same see what is the value of the signal at infinite again same thing we can calculate with help of x of s okay with help of x of s that relation we are calling it as a final value theorem okay so uh, what is that final value theorem x of infinite is equal to limit 
t tends to infinite x of t limit s tends to 0 s into x of s see when t tends to infinite s is going to 0 previously when t is going towards 0 s is going towards infinite that is the change here okay this final means always with respect to time okay that you have to remember okay then this theorem is applicable only for stable system or signal okay stable Again, the function x of s has to be stable. The given x of s has to be stable. The transfer function has to be stable. Then how to identify the stability of the transfer function? Okay, whenever you are having some transfer function, then how to identify the stability? Okay, if x of s is given, okay, then how to know the stability? Whether the given one is stable or not, okay? See, when x of s is given, again, it consists of numerator and denominator. Okay, again, the simple idea is, if all the poles of, again, we no need to worry about the numerator. Again, the stability is generally decided by the denominator. Stability is decided by the denominator. Stability is decided by denominator. Stability is decided by the denominator. Then what is the simple idea here? If x of s is equal to numerator and denominator, from the denominator we can get poles value. Poles means what? Yes, values. Okay, it could be positive or negative or combination of positive and negative. Okay, then when we are calling the system or given transfer function is stable. Okay, when all the poles, okay, all the poles lies only on the left top of the s plane, when all the poles lies only on left of of s plane of s plane okay so if this condition is satisfied left of of the s plane left of left off of the s plane then the given transfer function is stable this is the first condition whenever you are having poles again all the poles has to lie on the left off of the s plane say for example you can have poles like this again this is stable okay this could be minus 2 minus 3 or you can have a poles like this okay whatever it may be but strictly the poles are lying only on the left off of the s plane so that the given system will be stable again the poles will be denoted by star mark in this also you would have studied in control system the zeros will be denoted by this symbol okay poles and zeros okay so then what is the another condition for stability the another condition the second condition for stability is again suppose the poles may be present on the imaginary axis without repetition okay poles present on imaginary poles present on imaginary axis without repetition without repetition also could be stable but this is not st stable strictly stable this is marginally stable okay this is marginally stable okay see what is the condition for stability strictly all the poles has to lie only on the left top of the s plane suppose if the poles are there on the imaginary axis the two without repetition then it is marginally stable okay then what is unstable condition what is unstable condition okay the first condition is if any one of the poles if any one of the one of the poles that means what if any one of the poles present present on rhs right hand side of s plane rhs of s plane then the system is unstable that means if there are three poles two is on the left side if one is on the right side then also the system is unstable and also if there are three poles if all the poles are on the right off of the s plane then also the system is unstable so what is the example say you are having two poles one is there and another one is there again this is unstable suppose uh, both the poles are on the uh, right off of the s plane then also the system is unstable what is the statement if any one of the poles present on the right of the s plane then the system is unstable then what is the marginally stable 
suppose if the poles are there on the imaginary axis without repetition then that is unstable suppose only you are having poles on the origin then also it is marginally stable marginally stable again uh, this condition without repetition we are saying that suppose if it is getting repeated then it will come under unstable so what is another condition for unstable unstable second condition unstable second condition repeated poles okay repeated repeated poles on imaginary axis repeated poles on imaginary axis is unstable that means what suppose if you are having two poles on s is equal to 0 that means s square is equal to 0 that means s 0 comma 0 there are two poles which are on the origin then also the system is unstable suppose if you are having two poles say for example this is um, plus j this is plus j and this is minus j that means there are four poles plus j plus j and also minus j minus j that means what the poles are getting repeated on the imaginary axis that's why this is unstable okay so uh, again what are all the condition stability if you want to get a stable system definitely all the poles has to be left off of the s plane suppose if the poles present on the imaginary axis without repetition we can say that that is marginally stable if any one of the poles is present on the right half of the s plane then the system is unstable and also even if you are on the uh, imaginary axis if the poles are getting repeated then also the system is unstable okay so these are all the condition for stability of the system okay so for final value theorem the x of s has to be stable okay only if it is stable you have to apply the final value theorem otherwise we cannot apply so okay simply we can say final value theorem not applicable okay we cannot apply okay so now we'll see the problems related to this find initial and final initial and final value of x of s okay x of s is equal to s plus 5 s square 3s plus 2 okay first we apply the initial value theorem whether the given to apply the initial value theorem we have to verify whether the given function is strictly proper or not yes it is strictly proper Okay, that is the first step that we have to do okay we have to verify what is the nature of the transfer function given is it strictly proper or not okay so this is strictly proper because the numerator degree is less than the denominator degree okay so what is the initial value theorem x of zero limit okay x of zero limit s tends to infinite s into x of s okay, then limit s tends to infinite uh, again multiply the numerator with s so we'll get s square plus 5s divided by s square plus 3s plus 2 okay so if you apply s is equal to infinite directly you will be getting infinite by infinite but that is not allowed okay that is not allowed so some way we have to get the finite answer okay this this is not allowed so we'll try to take s square outside from both numerator and denominator once if you take s square outside you will be getting 1 plus 1 plus uh, 5 by yes okay or taking s square outside so that you will be getting 1 plus 5 by yes in the denominator you will be getting 1 plus 3 by s plus 2 by s square in again now s square s square we can cancel limit s tends to infinite okay s square s square cancel 1 plus 5 by s divided by 1 plus 3 by s 2 by s square okay, then you apply s is equal to infinite 1 plus 5 by infinite is 0 1 plus 0 plus 0 so finally the value is 1 okay so initial value is 1 then final value.
final value x of infinite limit s tends to 0 s into x of s first of all we have to verify whether the given transfer function is stable or not okay uh, that is what is the transfer function given x of s is equal to s plus 5 divided by s square plus 3s plus 2 s plus 5 this we can write like s plus 1 into s plus 2 okay then what is the nature of the poles both the poles are on the left top of the s plane so definitely this is stable okay definitely this is stable system so then we can apply the final uh, final value theorem limit s tends to 0 s square plus 5s divided by s square plus 3s plus 2 0 plus 0 0 plus 0 plus 2 is equal to 0 so final value is 0 again in future uh, you will try to convert x of s into x of t then in this you substitute t is equal to 0 t is equal to infinite whether you get the same answer or not you verify later okay so in future we will be discussing how to find out x of t from x of s that is the concept of inverse laplace transform then after after finding this x of t you just try to apply this then try to cross verify this answer okay, next question find find final value of x of s is equal to 1 by s square plus 4 solution again whether this one is stable or not that we have to verify so x of s means s square plus 2 square okay which is equal to s plus 2j s minus 2j that means poles are present on the imaginary axis okay one at plus 2j another one is at a minus 2j now what is the nature of this system this system is not a stable st system but it is marginally stable okay marginally stable marginally stable but what is the condition for us for us it has to be strictly stable but it is marginally stable then we cannot find the final value okay why we cannot find final value because if you see the x of t for this one it will be like a sinusoidal signal okay again we do not know what could be the nature of the uh, signal value at t is equal to infinite okay because it will be keep on varying between plus or minus one okay we cannot say what is the value at t is equal to infinite so that's why final value theorem we cannot apply here okay final value theorem not applicable not possible to apply final value theorem not possible to apply final value theorem next question find initial and final value x of s is equal to s square plus 5s plus 7 plus s square plus 3s plus 2 solution again the given x of s is uh, proper it is proper but not strictly proper okay so again to apply the initial value theorem the function x of s has to be strictly proper but it is just proper only so that we cannot apply the initial value theorem can't apply the initial value theorem initial value theorem okay then what is the problem in applying the initial value theorem here again we'll try to convert this into strictly proper say for example the x of s is there i will write one plus something 
So this we can write one plus something. Say for example, x one of s. Now this x one of s will be strictly proper. So once if it is strictly proper again, you can calculate what is x one of t corresponding x one of t. You can apply what is t is equal to zero. But what is the problem here? When you try to convert this one into time domain, what will be a what will happen? It would have been del t. Okay, then once if you apply t is equal to zero, this is okay. But if you apply t is equal to zero here, again the value is infinite. Okay, infinite plus something is infinite. Again, we cannot get the proper answer. Okay, we won't get proper answer. That's why. So we won't get proper value, so that we cannot apply the initial value theorem. That is the main reason. So then, what is the final value for this one? Whether the given um, transfer function is stable or not? Yes, it is stable. If you write the, if you find the poles for this one, uh, for this equation, uh, you will be getting that uh, all the poles will be on the left half of the s-plane, so that this is the stable only. Okay, so uh, we can we can find we can apply the final value theorem. Okay, final value that is x of infinite limit. S tends to zero. S into x of s. That is s into the transfer function. That is s square five s plus seven divided by s square three s plus two. Again, limit goes from limit goes to zero. Okay, limit is limit goes to zero. So limit. Yes, goes to zero. Okay, if you apply this, you will be getting zero by two, zero. Next, we'll see some more problems for Laplace transform. Uh, see, um, for Laplace transform problem, there are four basic. Uh, basic formula. That means uh, we should know uh, the Laplace transform for basic signal. Okay, because once if we know that, then only we can uh, find out the inverse Laplace transform for any signal. You see, already we have calculated this e power minus a t u of t. The Laplace transform is one by s plus a. Again, the R O C is Greater than minus a because this is right-sided signal. Again, the pole is s is equal to minus a, so sigma is greater than minus a. Okay, this we have calculated. Okay, and the next one, second one, we have not calculated. But suppose if instead of minus a, if it is plus a, here is we'll be getting s minus a. Okay, if it is plus a here, here it is minus a. Similarly, if it is minus a here, here it is plus a. Then what is the ROC here? Again, this signal is right-sided signal, so the ROC is also right-sided. That means from S is equal to A, the ROC goes towards right. That means sigma is greater than A. Okay, see, uh, in uh, again uh, here the answer is also different and the ROC is also different. But if you see the third case, uh, that is when we take minus e minus e, minus e power minus a t u of minus t okay this we have solved okay so this is 1 plus 1 by s plus a but this is the left sided signal then what is the roc roc is also left sided that is sigma is less than minus a because s plus a is equal to 0 so s is equal to minus a okay so sigma is less than minus a okay if you see carefully the first and third one Laplace transform is one by s plus a only. Both are same, but in time domain it is really different. But in s domain it is same. But how it is distinguished? It is distinguished with help of ROC. Okay, we are distinguishing that with help of ROC. Okay, then fourth one. Again, and also remember when you are in when you are writing left sided signal, one more minus is there. Okay, if there is no minus here, that minus we can also take here. Okay, so in the question, if they are not giving this minus, again you will get one extra minus here. This minus we, we can take here also. Okay, if it is plus here, again that minus will be taken here. Okay, so and then if it is minus e power instead of minus a, if it is plus a, 
okay if it is plus a u of minus t then once if it is e power plus a then th this is 1 by s minus a then what is the roc sigma is less than a okay we see here the second and fourth the laplace transform is same but in time domain it is different and also in roc it is different okay these are all the four basic signal for that you should know readily the laplace transform and also the roc okay now we'll take one problem find laplace transform of x of t equal to e power minus 3t u of t e power minus 2t u of minus t okay so now there are two signal so what is the laplace transform x of s is equal to what is the laplace transform of first one that is 1 by s s plus 3 okay if it is minus 3 here it is plus 3 then this minus sign we can observe here so this is something similar to the second uh, something similar to which one uh, here also minus everywhere minus is there okay this is something similar to the third one okay again here also we will be getting 1 by s plus a format okay so again this is also 1 by s plus 2 but what is the difference here for this one the roc sigma Okay, ROC because this is the right sided signal. So the ROC is greater than minus 3. For this one, the ROC is left sided, okay, but it is less than minus 2. Okay. See, then here the sigma is greater than minus 3, here sigma is less than minus 2. Again, what is the intersection of these two? Because when you have two ROC, again you have to take intersection. Then what is the intersection of this sigma? greater than minus 3 sigma less than minus 2 okay so this is the roc for this problem okay this is the roc for this problem so roc for this problem is sigma greater than minus 3 and sigma less than minus 2 so that means what the roc diagram will be like this okay say for example if minus 3 is there poles and another pole minus 2 is there again you draw a parallel line here here also one parallel line this entire region is the roc okay this is sigma and this is j omega this entire region is the roc because roc is in between minus 3 to plus minus 2 minus 3 and minus 2 okay this is the roc for this one again and also we can uh, further simplify this okay once if you simplify that you will be getting s plus 2 divided by s plus 3 into s plus 2 and s plus 3 okay then further you will be getting 2s plus 5 divided by s square 5s plus 6 what is the roc the common roc is from minus 3 to minus 2 okay so this is the roc so whenever we write the answer and also we have to write the roc also okay now what is the inference from this what is the nature of this signal okay uh, again whether this is a stable one or unstable and whether it is causal or non-causal okay in general from time domain itself we can identify whether the given signal is stable or not and also whether it is causal or non-causal okay and the same thing we can also verify with the help of the roc diagram okay roc diagram in first we'll write we'll get the observation from time domain first okay later we'll see how to verify it from the roc diagram okay e power minus 3t u of t e power minus 2t u of minus t okay whether the given signal is signal or system is stable or not okay uh, again before finding out the stability first of all we see whether this is causal or not okay this is not causal okay this is non causal why because causal means it should consist of only positive time but this is this system consists of negative time also okay if the system is defined for a negative time then that is non causal okay then whether it is stable or not okay see when you substitute positive value here
So when you substitute positive value here, again, e power minus infinity is zero. But whereas what is happening here, here t is negative, already minus is there. If you substitute t as negative, then e power infinite, again, the answer is infinite. So that means what? This is unstable. Okay, so this signal or system is unstable. Okay, so from time domain we are calculating. Then later we will see how to calculate, how to identify this nature from the ROC diagram. This is the ROC diagram. Okay, so then again the same problem we will solve it in the different manner in the three different varieties. Okay, then finally we will compare ROC of all the uh, all the cosines and also we will try to get these these natures from the ROC also. Okay, so now what is the second question? Second question. Again, this is also something similar to first question only, but with little difference. Okay, so here x of t, x of t is equal to e power minus 3t u of t and e power minus 2t u of t. Okay, now what is the Laplace transform x of s? 1 by s plus 3, then what is the ROC for this one? Sigma greater than minus 3 because this is the right sided signal. And then for this one, 1 by s plus 2, again this is also right sided, sigma greater than minus 2. Then what is the common ROC? Again, once if you simplify this, you will be getting 2s plus 5 divided by s square 3s, s square uh, plus 5x s square plus 5s plus 6. Again, what is the common ROC for these two? That is sigma greater than minus 2. Okay, here sigma is greater than minus 3. Here sigma is greater than minus 2. Then what is the common ROC? Sigma greater than minus 2 is the common ROC. Say here minus 3 is there. Here minus 2 is there. Okay, then what is the common ROC for these two one? That is sigma greater than minus 2. That is this entire region is the ROC. Again, what is this nature of this signal X of t, whether is it causal or not? Okay, again, you see here this signal is defined only for positive time. So definitely this is causal. And also whether it is stable or not. Okay, whether it is stable or not, when you substitute positive time here, again it becomes like e power minus infinite zero. Here also when you substitute positive value, e power minus infinite zero, that means uh, you are getting finite value even at infinite time so that so the given signal is stable and then ROC is greater than the minus 2 uh, and also the given signal is causal. Later we'll see how to identify this uh, nature from the ROC diagram. Okay, third problem. X of t is equal to minus e power minus 3t u of minus t minus e power minus 2t u of minus t then the Laplace transform x of s is equal to 1 by s plus 3. Okay, this minus I am absorbing inside. Okay, similarly this minus also I am absorbing inside so that this is 1 by s plus 2. Then what is the ROC? For the first one the ROC is, uh, ROC is less than minus 3 because this is left sided signal. So ROC is less than minus 3 and then this second signal is also left sided one so that ROC is less than minus 2 then what is the common ROC okay again the final answer here is 2s plus 5 divided by s square 5s plus 6 then what is the common ROC for this one that is less than minus 3 okay say for example you are having minus 3 and a minus 2 Okay, one is less than minus 3 and another one is less than minus 2. Then what is the common ROC? Less than minus 3. Okay, so this region is the ROC for this question. Okay, so this is the 
or was now what is the nature of the signal so definitely the x of t is non causal because it is only defined for uh, only defined for negative time so this is anti causal or non causal and then what is the uh, stability okay stability whether this is stable or not okay see already minus is there if you substitute negative time definitely e power infinite is infinite so this is unstable so this is non causal and also unstable okay so now we will compare okay see in all these three problem we took some x of t but that e power is mostly same okay minus 3 minus 2 and in the next case also minus 3 minus 2 Minus three, minus two, but here some difference is there. We may be using u of minus t, or sometimes we may be using u of t with the plus or minus. But if you see the answer for all these are same, the x of s is same for all the question. Okay, this is the x of s, two s plus five divided by s square five s plus six, and here also same answer. Here also same answer. So that means what they are differentiated by the uh, different ROC. Okay, so now we'll compare all these. Okay. so what about the nature of the first system and second system and third system with respect to stability okay and then with respect to causal or not okay so now what is the nature of the first system the nature of the first system is uh, first the nature of the first one is non causal and also uh, and also unstable non causal and also unstable okay uh, is it stable no it is not stable okay and also uh again we'll put yes or no okay it is no it is not stable is it causal or not it is not causal okay so the first one is uh, not stable and also it is not causal okay see so once again we'll verify non causal and also unstable what is the second one causal and stable okay so causal stable and also it is causal okay what is the third third one is uh, non causal third one is non causal and also unstable okay is also and then the third one is uh, it is non causal and also unstable so no no okay see if you see that second system this is um, both stable and also it is causal and, and also this is not the only variety okay you can get the different possibility okay here you can get yes here no or here no here yes okay so you can get any possibility okay there are four different variety is possible no no possible no yes yes no yes s yes, is possible but in our case uh, we are having only uh, three examples in that again the first and the third problem is behaving the same manner but the roc is uh, different okay no oh. okay so then from the diagram itself how to identify the nature okay whether uh, from this diagram how to know whether the system is stable or not okay so now um, there are some confusion in um, both stability and the causality of the given system that is it's not matching with the roc and also with the time domain equation there is some mistake okay that we are making okay, that will identify okay again we'll compare regarding this non causal and stability in the next class okay we'll compare all these in the next class but uh, now we have discussed very clearly whenever the problem is given like this 
okay what would be the answer then what would be the roc for that answer again x of t is different okay so x of t is different but uh, the x of s is same for all the problem but with a different roc the different roc and in general the two sided signal okay that for the this is the two sided signal because the first one is going towards uh, towards right the second one is going towards left okay the two sided signal will have the roc like this okay the roc of two sided signal will be always will be like this okay in between some values again if the signal is of only one sided say this is both the signals are going towards right okay the signal is like one sided signal again the roc is also one sided and also please note down the roc even though there are two poles the roc is not including the other poles okay in general in general the roc will not include the poles in general roc will not include include the poles in general roc will not include the poles again you see in the previous case also the roc will not include the poles roc is the region in between this one again we are not putting the equal sign here okay and uh, in third case this is left sided this is also left sided and again even roc is also left sided okay and here also uh, see that uh, roc is not including the poles so in general the general property is roc will not contain any poles okay in its region okay so uh, today we have seen uh, we have taken that different problem in the same format with the same value okay same value of e power again we got same answer in the s domain but with a different roc okay so in the next class we will take the same problem we will analyze stability and causality of the uh, problems given both in time domain and in s domain that is with the help of roc and later we will see the inverse laplace transform